Hello and welcome to module 4 of Marketing Research MKT 322 and module 4 as you know talks about the data collection and uh, this module is going to have two lectures. This is lecture number 1 in which I'm going to talk about the uh, questionnaire uh, making, how do you design a questionnaire, how do you make a questionnaire and also the sampling. So uh, we are using this uh, screen if you can see on my screen. Let me increase the size of my screen so that you could see it uh, more clearly. All right. So uh, in this, we are going to talk about uh, number one, questionnaire and form design, and number two, sampling design and procedure. So let's st get started with questionnaire. Um, questionnaire. Okay, sorry. This is kind of covering my screen. So I'll just adjust it. Uh, if you give me a sec. Here we are. That should be fine so questionnaire what is a questionnaire as you know questionnaire is a set of questions which you use when you want to uh, conduct a survey or you want to uh, interview people for your research uh, work and you have some research questions so you make a questionnaire to start with to before you collect the data so to collect the data you make a questionnaire you design a questionnaire and form so what is a questionnaire it is as you can see if you can see my cursor here a questionnaire is a formalized set of questions for obtaining information from respondents at the same time i would like to set my timer so that i don't know i'm not going <coughs> too long here we go so a questionnaire is a formalized set of questions why uh, what is the purpose of a questionnaire the purpose of a questionnaire is to, um, you know, obtain or to get information from your respondents, people that you are interviewing, people you are conducting the survey with. You want to get some information from them, obtain the information from them. So to obtain the information from them, you need to make a set of questions. It, there is a, it is a formalized set of questions because there is a methodology that we follow in making these questionnaires. Now, what are the objectives? The, what is the maqsad of a questionnaire? The objective is to translate the information needed into a set of specific questions that the respondents uh, can and will answer. So you have to translate the information that you need. The information that you need to uh, get the answers for your research questions, you are going to convert that information uh, into for, uh, specific questions. If you remember when we were uh, doing step number one of research methodology uh, of, of the research process, marketing research process, step number one is to define the problem. In defining the problem, you have two parts. Number one is you define a broad uh, uh, statement, a broad problem, and then to answer that broad problem, you ask specific questions questions there is specific information that you require uh, for example we did the uh, case study of uh, Sears um, uh, superstore supermarket so Sears uh, wanted to find out uh, how it can increase its market share how can it, how it can increase its, uh, its uh, following so the idea was how Se the, the big problem was or the broad statement was how Sears can increase its market share okay and uh, the specific questions you wanted to know was are customers loyal to Sears are customers uh, liking the design the layout the pricing the quality the customer service all those things so if you answer these specific questions you will get the answer to the broader question whether um, Sears can increase its market share so uh, objective number one is that you want to translate or uh, you know uh, you want to transfer uh, the you want to basically uh, get the information that you require from the people and when you're making a questionnaire you're going to convert that tr that information uh, in the form of questions so that when you ask these questions specific questions from the interviewees uh, the people you're going to interview or survey they are able to answer those questions Number two is that your questionnaire should not be threatening. 
your questionnaire should not be threatening it should be a kind of a question which should welcome the the people who are in uh, being interviewed or people who are being asked the questions so the questionnaire should be written in a very uh, you know nice manner in the sense that the question should not threaten the person who is being interviewed it should rather uplift and motivate and encourage the respondents to um, you know uh, give the answers uh, sometimes you know you could also uh, keep an incentive for people that if you if you complete this uh, questionnaire they are going to get something in return maybe maybe a, a copy of the study that you are conducting or, or some kind of an insight that even they would be interested in knowing so a questionnaire must uplift and motivate and encourage people to answer the questions that you have in the questionnaire and of course the questionnaire should have questions which should be very clear and straightforward it should not confuse the people so that you are able to minimize the response of uh, the response error okay so let's go on to the next step which is how do you prepare a questionnaire there are 10 steps these are this is the ch uh, checklist the design so 10 steps are number one specify the information that you need you need to uh, first of all you have to know what is the information that you are looking for so unless you have specified the information that you need you're not going to be able to make the right kind of a questionnaire number two is you have to see what are the different interviewing methods you're going to use to collect the information computer assisted personal interviews all these kind of things step number three is individual question content how you have written the question questions are the questions clear are the questions straightforward are you clubbing too many uh, uh, questions in one question which is going to confuse so uh, confuse the uh, customer so you have to see the question content number four step number four is overcoming inability or unwillingness of the respondents to answer sometimes the respondents they have the information but they are not willing to answer or they are not comfortable so you have to you have to be uh, you have to think of a way of getting information out of them number five step number five is choose the question structure what kind of questions you are going to ask unstructured questions structured questions you will see this in more detail step number six choose question wording the wording has to be very simple you should not use uh, questions uh, the, you should not use vocabulary which is difficult to understand uh, then step number seven is determine the order of questions the the questions which are straightforward and simple they should be uh, kept in the at the top of the questionnaire and the questionnaires which are dull with the question the, the questions which are dull and uh, they are difficult and complex questions and the and the respondent is going to be uncomfortable in answering those you can try and bring them down so we'll see the order of questions that we should have in our questionnaire then step number eight the form and layout yani how you are going to design the questionnaire well, how is it going to look like okay the form and layout and uh, then you're going to take a printout and you're going to uh, you know distribute the questionnaire either online or in, uh, in hard copy so how do you reproduce the questionnaires and very important step number 10 is pre-testing if you're not pre-testing uh, if you can see here pre-testing is very important yani you make a questionnaire and then you go and take a sample of people that you are going to interview and see how they are finding the questions are they finding it easy to understand what you want to ask or are they confused so you have to conduct a pre-test so like like before before actually launching uh, the uh, our product in the market we do test marketing we see how the customers are responding to our to our uh, product so likewise uh, for a questionnaire also you have to pre-test the questions before you ask uh, before you send out the questionnaire to people so let us see these 10 steps one by one step number one is specify the information needed so what kind of information do you have to specify you have to ensure that an information obtained fully addresses all the components of the problem i told you that there is a broad statement and then there are smaller components that help you answer the broader statement so when you're making the questionnaire you have to ensure that all the specific components are covered by your questions okay and then you also have to see that they are covering all the research questions the hypothesis that you're trying to prove right or wrong and also specification of the information 
For doing this, you can also use dummy tables as is given here. Dummy tables, what are dummy tables? Basically, these are uh, you know tables that um, describe how the analysis, how the data will look like, how it will be structured after you have collected the data. Then uh, the target population, you should be very clear about it. The people that you are, uh, you are going to interview, the people you're going to send out the questionnaire to, you should be very clear who are these people. They should be your target customers. They should be the people that you want to uh, get information from or they are the people who have the answers to your questions. They can be uh, target uh, customers, they could be a particular class of uh, people. So you should be very clear, uh, you cannot just send out your questionnaire to anyone. So you should be clear who are the people that you are trying to target in your market research. Step number two is type of interviewing method. What type of interviewing method are you going to use uh, to get the answers to the questions that you have in the questionnaire? So either you're going to conduct personal interviews with the customers or you're going to have computer assisted interviewing. So uh, if you have, uh, if you have, uh, okay, I'll have to just take this call. Just give me a second, please. Hello, yes. Hello. Walaikum salam. Yes. Okay, uh, it'll take me a bit of time. So just, just wait for 15, 20 minutes. I'll be there. Okay, bye because I'm in the middle of a meeting, thanks. So, uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, working from home has its uh, you know, challenges. <laughs> this is one of them, so there's my son waiting for me somewhere. I should have uh, told him in advance, so fine. Step number two is type of interviewing method. What is the interviewing method you're going to use? So, uh, if, if you have complex questions, if you have lengthy questions and different types of questions, it is always better to conduct a personal interview with the people. So, you will be able to get more clear information then. Step number three is individual question content. What are the kind of questions that you are asking? Are the questions that you are asking really necessary? Uh, so, we have to see the uh, questions which are not really adding any value or bringing you the information that you require they should not be asked. Uh, do not ask too many questions. But yes, you have to be very careful that the questions that you're asking should be very clear and straightforward. For example, you should not try to club two questions in one. So you have to see, is it becoming unclear, un, uh, unambiguous? Do you need to separate the two questions? Uh, these are called, when you're asking two questions in one, these are called double barrel questions. You know a double barrel gun which has two barrels? two barrels, one, uh, one bullet in this and the other bullet in this. So you should not have double barrel questions. You sh uh, for, uh, okay, for example, do you think, do you think Kulia Jamaya is one of the best and the most, uh, you know, comprehensive uh, college in Yembo? So, I mean, the, the, the answer to this question cannot be one. Maybe someone thinks it is one of the best colleges, yes, but uh, uh, someone may, may think it, is not, it does not have a very comprehensive list of, of courses to offer. So, um, you should not club two questions together. Uh, we will see this, uh, we will see uh, this one, uh, which is double barrel questions, um, a little later in this uh, lecture. So, here we are. The effects of interviewing methods. Um, how do you how interviewing methods affect um, the questionnaire design? So, for example, if you are mailing the questionnaire, you can you can ask uh, if you are mailing the questionnaire, you can ask the people uh, to rank uh, the to give a ranking to, to to the different options you have. For example, in the case of Sears, we saw that Sears uh, wanted to know how it can uh, increase its market share. So in this questionnaire, which was mailed to the customers, they have given uh, 10 different stores and Sears is at number nine. And they are asking the people, the respondents, to give rank number one uh, um, to the store that they like the best. So, uh, and rank number two to the store that they, they, they like second best, three to the third best. So like this, Sears can know what is the ranking that its customers are giving to it. But when you are asking the same question over the phone, 
the questionnaire design is going to be different. You are, you can uh, you are going to tell them to uh, rate it on a ten point scale. How much? How many points would you give? How many points would you give? Uh, so this is for clarity. You can ask them uh, how many points they would give to the different stores. Uh, so the 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 store that they prefer the most, they can give it maximum point, which is ten, and the store that they prefer the least. They can give the give it just one point so sears at number nine will be able to know what is the preference of uh, customers how many uh, points are they willing to give to its quality and service and uh, its brand image uh, number three uh, personal interviews when you are uh, when you are personally interviewing people and you're sharing your questionnaire with them here you can use you know cards and you can tell uh, the each card could have the name of the store and Sears could have um, uh, its name on one of the cards and you can ask them here are 10 cards which store do you like the best and they can pick one card and okay which and now out of nine cards which which uh, store do you like second best and third best like that so personal uh, personal questionnaire could be conducted like this uh, then electronic questionnaire, also like emails, um, like the email uh, questionnaire that you sent, um, it can be conducted online or on the internet. Now, uh, individual question content. Uh, we have to see uh, the content of the uh, questions that we have. So sometimes, um, like I said, there can be double barreled questions, as you can see here. Uh, do you think coca-cola is a tasty and refreshing soft drink this is not the right way of asking it this is a double barrel question two questions in one it will be more easy and simple to ask this question in form of two questions do you think coca-cola is a tasty soft drink and the next question do you think coca-cola is a refreshing soft drink which will be a correct way of answering these questions then uh, as I said, sometimes the respondents are not willing to answer uh, or they are unable to answer. So here we have the respondents may refuse to respond or they may not have the ability to respond or they may not be accessible. So you have to, you have to be careful about this because if you want your research to have, <clears throat> uh, to, if you want a research study which should have at least 100 responses from or your customer, then you should interview not only 100 customers but 150 customers so keep that margin for that that even if 50 people are not not responding uh, you do have the 100 responses that you actually required so the sample size has to be large enough to allow for non responses okay and then you can use uh, you know certain aids uh, some kind of a help you can give them for example you can use pictures maps and descriptions to help people respond to your questions so people who are not able to respond you can help them by using pictures and extra description also you have you can improve the design if people are not responding you can improve the design of your questionnaire make the questions mo more simple or, or restructure it or, or um, ask it differently and also as second point here you can call those respondents back you know kind of maybe the first time they did not answer you can try and call them again and third time do not annoy them annoy them because that would be very uh, bad and they, they you're going to put off your respondents don't do that but yes you can be a little persistent and then <clears throat> you can attempt to estimate the non-response bias you can try to estimate how many people are not going to be responding and so you can keep a margin for that step number five you have to choose the question structure open-ended questions uh, um, are unstructured questions because you, these questions are such that people are going to answer them not in yes and no they are going to uh, you know use their own words and language in explaining such questions for example as we have here what is your occupation what is your favorite act who is your favorite actor what do you think people uh, what do you think about people who shop at high-end departmental stores so <clears throat> people can explain their answer these are unstructured questions and structured questions you have options these the, the, I mean there is not much room for you to uh, uh, express yourself so these are the structured questions so what are the different types of structured questions as we have here multiple choice questions uh, dichotomous questions or scale questions so let us see these one by one multiple choice questions as you can see here uh, there is a statement at the top are you going to buy a new car 
in the next six months and then there are some options or alternatives given here it says definitely uh, will not buy or probably will not buy and, and, and these and people can choose from these options okay so these are multiple choice questions these choices people can choose from then dichotomous questions are yes and no questions dichotomous yet yani two types of uh, replies are there and sometimes there's a third reply also which says mm, I'm not sure or I don't know so dichotomous questions can have yes no uh, as an answer and a third option could also be there which could be don't know step number six is that you should use simple and ordinary uh, uh, language and and and, and uh, wordings so as you can see here uh, the, uh, here's an example given here which is not the right kind of ask, uh, way of asking do you think the distribution of soft drinks is adequate adequate may not be a very straightforward word instead you could say do you think soft drinks are easily available when you want to buy them this is a more clear question using simple English step number seven is opening questions uh, step number seven means you have to you are able to determine you have to decide what kind of questions you are going to open your questionnaire with what kind of questions are going to be in the middle what kind of questions you're going to keep towards the end so in the opening uh, in the beginning of a questionnaire the type of questions you should ask should be interesting they should they should be simple and they should not be threatening you know uh, don't ask about people's income or, or sometimes even age people can be very touchy about so these kind of questions should not be asked in the beginning um, uh, the type of information the type of information that you ask for example sorry uh, the, the basic information which relates directly to your research uh, problem these kind of questions should be asked in the beginning the basic information and uh, then the classification information classification information which is like the demography uh, of people what kind of a social economic background they have uh, what uh, what kind of area they come from geographical um, segmentation um, uh, what, what kind of uh, you know uh, uh, psychographic uh, 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 information that you would like to take from them and also um, uh, identification information could be towards the end where you can ask them name and address and phone number um, because uh, if you may you may tell them that you want to give them an incentive or a, or a reward for answering so you need you require their contact details to get back to them and send them the reward and difficult questions should be asked towards the end which could be embarrassing like about I told you income or age or these kind of questions uh, how much do you spend or, or which, which, which brands do you actually buy so some people may not be willing to divulge such information so these kind of questions should be asked towards the end of the questionnaire step number eight is the form and layout so uh, you should uh, the, the, the questions should be uh, very uh, you know clearly uh, laid out the, 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 the look of the questionnaire has to be it should not look very cluttered okay divide the questions into several parts it should be very organized and the question <clears throat> in each part should be numbered <clears throat> particularly when branching questions are being asked you know what are branching questions sometimes we say uh, we, 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 we uh, do not require customers to answer all the questions for example how many children do you have now if uh, if someone does not have children then you don't he you don't have to tell him to answer other questions because if there are some questions about his children which school they go to or which uh, uh, sport do they play then those uh, questions are meaningless those are, those are branching questions so um, uh, you can you can number the questions and tell them that if if, if you do not have uh, if your answer to question number five is no then you don't have to answer uh, question six seven eight nine and ten you can uh, jump straight to question number uh, eleven all right um, and questions should be pre-coded you know because if you have the answers you can pre-code the answers we are going to see pre-coding in the next uh, module um, so pre-coding is, is a code that you give to every answer and so it becomes easy to uh, uh, do the data entry into the computer so questions should be uh, pre-coded and um, they should be serially numbered okay step number nine is reproduction of the questionnaire that the way you are going to take its print out so it should be taken out on a good quality paper and the appearance should be uh, professional 
okay and uh, instead of loose papers uh, maybe you could you could club it together and in a uh, nicely bind it in the form of a booklet all right and uh, try to have the questions um, each question should be reproduced on a single page you know um, uh, if, if it is if it is a scenario you are giving then the the way you are using the space on the page should be uh, smart and uh, in an organized manner and uh, there should be a vertical column for responses okay and uh, if the, if you are using numbers and you can use tables and grids and do not try to crowd too many questions uh, uh, together because sometimes you may want to show that the questionnaire is not too long in, uh, and trying to do that you can you may try to crowd too many questions on one page so that's not a very uh, advisable uh, practice and the directions and instructions for the individual questions should be very uh, clearly uh, explained and they should be close right next to the question if there are any additional instructions you have and last but not the least certainly pre-testing which is a very important aspect of questionnaires pre-testing uh, you should be able to pre-test the questions on a sample of your respondents as you can see here um, the questionnaire should not be used in the field survey without adequate pre-testing you should not it, it, it is a very wrong exercise it's a, it, it is just like you know uh, throwing your uh, your product in the market without uh, doing test marketing um, so um, you know, same goes for the questionnaire and that you should pretest it with a with a sample of respondents okay so what you should uh, pretest you should test uh, you should pretest the co the content of the questions the wording the sequence the format and layout and the difficulty level of the questions as well as the instructions and the people that you are pretesting the questionnaire with should be from the same population that you are going to conduct the entire survey with okay so if you are conducting a survey if you are conducting a survey uh, on students of Kulia Jamaiya then when you're pre-testing you should be pre-testing also with the same uh, people yani, uh, in, in pre-testing also you should use the the students of Kulia Jamaiya all right um, then uh, personal interviews is, is, is a good way uh, for pre-testing when you're pre-testing you could conduct a personal interviews to get the exact information that you are looking for even though maybe later on when you're conducting the large survey uh, um, you you may use uh, different methodologies which may be emails and telephones and le electronic means uh, and and a computer assisted interviewing but when you are doing the pre-testing for pre-testing try to conduct personal interviews because then you will be able to see their reactions and their attitude so pre-testing um, could be done with the help of personal interviews because it will require more effort on your part and you can get better results and you can design and uh, your questionnaire in the best possible manner okay and after you have done the pre-testing and you have made the changes that you require in your questionnaire then you should try to pre-test it one more time and this time you can you don't have to conduct personal interviews you can just use email and telephone and electronic means to conduct the second pre-testing uh, wave okay and you should uh, you should not uh, uh, interview only one type of respondents you should you should interview different types of respondents different types of interview uh, interviewers a variety of interviewers uh, should be used for pre-testing um okay and uh, also the pretest sample size uh, should be around 15 to 30 respondents and as i said in the last one also the answers can be pre-coded so it will help you in uh, the data entry and analyzing the questions so here we are this is uh, the end of the 10 steps of uh, designing a questionnaire uh, I'll take you back to slide number four. Um, this this uh, PowerPoint, this presentation uh, is available on e-learning and you can uh, uh, download it from there and listen to this uh, lecture. And if you have any questions, you can ask me and we are also going to discuss it in our interactive Q&A session on Zoom, inshallah. All right. Have a good day and all the best.